Good morning, fellow Dome Starvers. I am James Bucket, here to guide your early days in Area 52. But before we get into that, as the golden rule for all tutorials dictate, I am obliged to spend a minute or two mentioning the sponsor that I sold my integrity to, and promoting their product with no affection whatsoever. The generous sponsor goes by the name Generations Console Arcade, located in Rochester, New Hampshire. And as a company in New Hampshire, aka the Granite State, they fittingly decided to open a Minecraft server which I suspect is a cunning covert attempt to recruit employees for the local quarries. The server can be accessed at a low price of $5 per month, a paywall well affordable and well worth the price. It effectively keeps the upper crust members protected from the lower crumbs commonly found in the cesspools of free public servers. Furthermore, this cubic utopia is well maintained by a robust hardware, presented as battery smooth 20 TPS. I have no clue what TPS is, but 20 is a number so big that I need all my fingers and toes and teeth to count, so my educated guest tells me this is indeed very impressive. The members will also be allowed to participate in online game events, clubs, and exclusive Discord channels perfect for those who are not yet ready to face the real world, recovering from all that social distancing. The community itself is guaranteed to be well populated by reeling in real people with real world marketing such as asking a YouTuber famous for Don't Starve videos to promote a Minecraft server. The same content creator also values the idea of not beating around the bush and getting straight to the point. So I'll leave their website and their discord server to give you further information regarding the Minecraft server and get into the tutorial to the suite. Step 1. Create a new world. 3 game modes for one godforsaken playground, which one do you pick? Survival mode of course, designed specifically for brave homelesses who seek a journey of self-improvement. Because in this mode, there is a constant looming fear that upon death, there is a chance that the world could divide your progress by zero. All the days you spent working in the constant rather than your school assignment dusting away from a single slip. Now that should keep you on your toes. Survival mode is also a long-standing tradition that respects the game's more roguelike predecessors, which is why when browsing other worlds, you'll encounter more survival mode servers than any other modes. In this community, players selecting any other game modes are regarded as cowards, and believe me, no one wants to join servers that are run by some yellow belly puss. Step 2. Choose a character. A brand new world needs a brand new sacrifice. For those who have trouble picking a champion among these lab rats, allow me to recommend the best of the best for both beginners and experts. Not the most popular selection, as the character does have notable shortcomings such as being able to do f all. Still, one should learn to run before they learn to breathe, and by controlling the worst, you'll aim for the best. Besides, there are actual benefits of fingering this character that literally constantly blows, though the benefits can only be visible when participating in more communal survival. The thing is, Wes is a parasitic predator who uses pity to lure in his victims who are usually half-decent survivors who feel obligated to coddle and attend to the mime's needs at all times. Playing as Wes, you'll soon be fed with silver spoons stolen straight from other people's mouths. At least that is the case if you're a beginner. If you're somewhat of a skilled survivor, there is no bigger flex than showing everyone how you can do the absolute bare minimum. You get to play as a very definition of the word mistake instead of choosing any other character that can actually pitch in in any way. So in short, Wes is best. Step 3. Scavenging the moment you suck in the air of the constant, you ought to suck some supplies into your pants. Checklists, twigs, grass, rocks, flints. This tends to be the usual amount that lasts for the rest of my life, which is about a week on average. Coincidentally, a week is also the lifespan of this beautiful yet cheap flower crown, made with 12 flower petals you can gather with ease. It is the weakest sanity booster, but you must value every little thing that helps you escape reality. Like the reality where YouTube dislike button no longer exists and yet people are getting used to it. Against more physical damage, you'll be able to craft a grass suit. Weakest of all armors, but better than nothing for a fragile character in a fragile world. Of course, as the title of Soviet National Anthem suggests, we must not neglect sustenance. And nothing's more readily available than carrots. They last longer than berries, but run slower than bunnies. 
Stacks of them pulled here and there and they will help you pull through your journey. What journey you ask? Well, journey to... Step 4. Seek gold. To hear the sound of progress, you must veer towards gold. The mineral is naturally available in certain biomes or ripe for the picking with a bit of manual labor. But if the European history has proven anything, it's that gold is best found by persecuting the natives. Their houses apparently are made of everything you need to build an alchemy engine. With their king gladly bartering for the flesh of his subjects, perhaps the locals also won't mind being evicted for a noble cause. Step 5. Seek Home even the Garden of Eden can turn to Sodom depending on who breeds in it. So thy shall choose thy neighbor wisely, and who else than those big old fluffy buffs in the savannah. These hairy atrocities are magnificently practical in every conceivable manner. With their horns they protect you from constant threats. With their anuses they provide endless fuel. With their hair you can craft warm smelly hats. And with their flesh you'll have a fine meal if you live to eat one. Keep them close and soon they'll warm up to you. Step 6. Gather food and cook. Four steaks per kill make beefaloes deliciously attractive, but not only they are more useful alive, they always seem to refuse your dinner invitation. Fortunately, your other savannah neighbors much easier to convince, especially with some leftover carrots. Four or five traps will ensure wabbit season 24-7 with enough morsels to burn over a fire or to fill a pot to dish out Swedish gods. Want something more filling? Well, luckily, beefaloes can lend four slabs of meat each, which can be cooked into meaty stew. Sure, there are tons of more recipes you can learn, but like no one ever said, meatballs and meat stews all you need to keep your belly from whistling. Step 7. Furnish Home The cooking pot definitely proved its use, but you can't help wonder, what other buildables can improve your refugee camp? Well, first and foremost, you want this ice flingomatic to protect your gypsy heaven from environmental hazard. Once every corner is covered, other fire suppressing items will get to join me in the unemployment queue. Sure, these flingers may snuff out fire pits too, but hey, that's what the lanterns are for, aren't they? Then there are bee boxes, because how can we refuse this never-ending fountain of sweet golden shower? Long as there are enough flowers planted, the bees will be busy as a bee and fill those boxes in no time. How much you get out of this liquid gold mine heavily depends on how often you harvest, so keep them closer than your own children and suck them dry whenever you get the chance. All that honey's gotta go somewhere, so fridges are in order. That's right, fridges, because in this world of kill or be killed, there are so much less leftovers, so much that it can feed a west for an entire day. That food just needs somewhere to chill, preferably in fridges next to a pot placed in order to facilitate the cooking process. This layout seems to be most often used by the Don't Starve community. Now, like they always say, you should always use protection. In this case, all you build must be protected using walls. As effective as the Great Wall of Texas, these barriers, though not indestructible, will keep you safe for an extra minute or two. That should give you enough time to prepare either by arming yourself, by planning another way out, or by praying to heaven above to notify your imminent arrival. Just kidding, as long as you follow my advice and prepare it as I told you, you'll be able to survive for one whole week or even two. If you're lucky, you'll even get to experience what winter is like in the constant, which will be covered in another video. In an event that the video is not published due to the lack of sponsor, just remember that winter is a walk in a park long as you got a torch in a hand in a vast forest land. Since all good things must come to an end, this certainly won't for some time, especially if I still haven't hit that 8 minutes time mark. But if I did fill my quota, then this is the moment I bid you adieu, trusting that you've already pressed like and subscribe button when my cat so rudely interrupted the video. Thank you for watching this perfect tutorial with no way misleading and always better than reading. With that being said, cheers.